Hello everyone, welcome back. This is game number two in a best of three between University of British Columbia and University of California, Berkeley. My name is Joshua Fekai's Quest, here with Returned. And that early game looked like it was going to go kind of even, but man, UBC just popped off and ran with it and did not give up. Yeah, it really was UC Berkeley's game to lose there at the beginning. They had so much priority around the map, and then it really came to a head in that mid-game point where they started getting those picks, but they just really were never able to put it into anything. It was that one barren, barren area of play where they brought in Pandex at like the last second that really just knocked them right down in the end, but got to see if they can adapt just a little bit and maybe looking to play a bit of a different comp here. Yeah, it's going to be an interesting uh, pick and ban phase because everybody on the side of UBC played exceptionally well, and uh, you would have to think that um, Berkeley, they have to ban something out and possibly not prioritize that Nunu because a Nunu... Like I said, it's almost a trap in my opinion. I, I, I feel like, well, yeah, the Azir Nunu combination is great for the synergy, but at the same time, you have no jungle pressure. You have you can you can counter jungle, but that's about it. Yeah, most certainly. And honestly, the lane just were not quite there to really enable the Nunu. And by the time it started coming to fruition, it was already too late. And there really just was no answer to the lies issue. The original answer was just, hey, what if we don't feed the Twitch? Then maybe he won't pop off too hard. And that worked for a while. And that was just that one little play. Gave him all that gold. And UBC, they were off to the races. Yeah, that was, uh, yeah, like, yeah, like you said, pretty much no, no real tools to get going with that Nunu at all. So we're going to see how it turns out. I doubt uh, Long and Milty, I don't, I don't think he's going to be able to be picking that one up this time around. We see no uh, ban priority on that. We do see ban priority on the Zac taking that away from Kazahana, and that is actually going to be a Sejuani picked up for Berkeley, which I feel like way better jungler, a lot more pressure, and just an overall brute in the early game. Yeah, when you look at how much priority really was there with Lo uh, Long make Milk T. Basically, anything is greater than zero, so Sejuani definitely going to be having a lot more of that jungle priority, but it does also look like a zero will be going over, but that's going to be to the other side, and Pros might be looking to make this one work out for him. I hope he doesn't... I, I really hope he doesn't get... I, I hope he doesn't get the Nunu. I, I still understand the priority of it, but there's just so much... such a sacrifice when you pick the Nunu. It's overall that he, the, of what his kit offers, but there is the Nunu hovered over. Kazahana, please be trolling Ooh. me. I don't think he... Ooh! Ooh! going to be locking that one in so this time ubc are going to be trying out the uh nunu and azir combination i really want to see just the entirety of uc berkeley's composition get picked up here because in the back of my mind I'm like all right the ubc coaches they're looking over at uc berkeley and they're just saying you know what screw you guys anything you can do we can do 10 times better best team north america yeah that's essentially what they're doing and this is kind of a almost a psychological play uh, against Berkeley, saying, yeah, we'll show you how to do it. But we see a brand locked in. I would assume that's for Rafflecopter. Uh, I, I, we don't see too many uh, high competitive play brands, but Rafflecopter, he uh, he was aggressive on that Blitzcrank, and what more aggressive champion can you get on support than a brand? Yeah, most certainly. I mean, you're talking about the high impact uh, supports, and I mean, Rafflecopter, he couldn't quite put the team on his back with the uh, Blitzcrank, didn't have enough hooks, didn't have enough in the bag. So maybe Brian is going to burn the other team to the ground. And I mean, if you're looking for answers of how to shut down an enemy hyper carry, letting him on fire probably ranks near the top of that list. Yeah, we do see a Tristana locked in for Turkey Master. So that is going to be a lot of turret siege pressure coming out from Berkeley, which is that pickup alone. But uh, like I said, I'm, I'm curious to see if that brand is, is a support, though. We're going to see what pros plays. Zoe is still up. Zoe did did very well on Zoe, but going to pick up the Gangplank. Ooh. That is actually, I forgot he's actually, the Zier's already picked up. So that Gangplank is actually for IE, which you talked about last game. He's very comfortable on Gangplank. Oh, yeah. I, he, I throughout this tournament, has only played on the Fiora and the Gangplank. Now he's had a game onto the Gnar, but he loves playing with pressure. Now, definitely going to be having the back seat in lane. He shouldn't. I'm going to put that shouldn't tag on instead of will not, uh, because I've seen this happen before, but he really shouldn't lose. Uh, he really shouldn't win too many of these lanes up here with the Gangplank matchup. But if you play it well enough, if you keep up and farm, you will be this massive threat going into that late game. And when you're looking at an enemy backline that currently consists of a Brand and Tristana, sure, they deal damage, but if they get hit with one of those good Gangplank barrel combos post three items, there is no enemy backline anymore. They are dead. Yeah. 
Yeah, and that's the, one of the big advantages of the gangplank. Not to mention the global presence that you get from his cannon barrage too. So that is something that Berkeley will have to watch out for as well as we take they take the severe and the twitch off the board for their last two bands, and that is going to be targeted at lies. So he's not going to be on that twitch anymore. I'm going to see who he picks up. There is a Caitlyn available if he wants to do what they do, what what they've been doing already with the Nunu and the Azir and show Turkey Master how to play Caitlyn. But there is also the synergy Oof. of the Varus which is a possibility as well, which looks like it may be locked in, and it is, yes. Yeah, Varus is one of these picks that have a little bit earlier spiking than the Tristana, then the classic ADC triple crit items, plus probably a Last Whisper item on top of that. Excuse me. But, yeah, you really just want to get the Rage Blade, you want to get the Wits End, and you just want to keep rolling on from there. That being said, it is a very immobile pick on this bottom part of the map, and really curious to see what Squee picks up here. But when you're looking at things to combo with the Nunu, I mean... If you don't want to go the route of Kog'Maz that's already been banned away, Twitch has already banned away too, and the Severe, basically all the champions he's played so far in this tournament, Varus, he's not too far, uh, too much further down on the priority list, and that is how you shake up a match. And that is yeah. how you put that right away. <laughs> Very much so. And uh, the, the Ornn, a lot of people are wondering about the Ornn uh, being nerfed. He still he has that engage potential, which actually that is something that Berkeley is bringing to the table this time around. Engage, but they're also oh, I was really hoping for the Tom Kinch, but that's okay because Rafflecopter is on Blitzcrank. Might be seeing a Knight Smite Blitzcrank, Blitzcrank this time around. I doubt it, but maybe that means that Brand is going into the mid lane. That will be a full AP Brand. Um, yeah, I've tried going against an Azir, which is actually a, a pretty tough matchup for him. I'm, yeah, that's a great Morgana pickup on the side of Squee, and I've got a bit of a head scratcher really looking at the blue side pick ban uh, coming right now out of UC Berkeley, and you almost got to think they kind of went a bit nuts after last game, just like, you know what, we tried playing League of Legends, let's try playing another game now. Uh, the brand in the mid lane, I think is going to get hard destroyed by the Azir, just because I don't really see many ways that Brand's going to be able to, able to knock him down, Azir has the longer range, sir, Brand has more damage if... Uh, Longan really prioritizes that mid lane presence, and you almost kind of get the reverse situation now, where it's UC Berkeley who has the jungler with actual lane presence, and UBC has the basically Nunu in the back pocket. But still, this is not really reliant on just good composition. This is all saying, all right, every single player UC Berkeley, games on your shoulders, make something happen, good luck. Yeah, that's uh, that's sometimes that's good. Sometimes that's bad. We're going to see how UBC uh, you know, reacts to that one because, uh, again, I'm so skeptical of the of the new, new anything comp. Like, I get it, uh, especially with Varus because his Blight does scale off of the AP and does the uh, percent percent damage. I get all that, but, man, I just... I, so far, the games I've casted, new, new, like the, the, nobody's been able to compensate for this lack of pressure, and mm. it, that's been huge in these games, especially in the early game, going into the mid game, where at the point that the mid game, the mid game arrives, there is no mid game for the person that runs the new new comp. But uh, at the same time, uh, they do have a lot of protection. They have the gangplank with a lot of damage as well. There's actually an overall on UBC a whole lot of damage. Yes, they do have a whole lot of damage. <laughs> but the thing with that is that when you have the Nunu, you'd like to have the winning lanes as well. And potentially, if you're looking at really schools of thought to follow while looking at this draft coming out of UC Berkeley, it could be at the screw you Nunu composition. Because, I mean, top lane, Orn versus Gangplank should have a slight advantage in Orn's favor. That being said, Orn is a pick we have seen fall off so hard since his 8.1, 8.2 nerfs. Isn't really just that undisputed king of the top anymore. Should still be doing pretty well into a scaling pick like the Gangplank. Look over to the mid lane, and yeah, Azir should have the advantage there. But throw in that jungle, most people refer to mid lane as a 2v2 lane instead of a 2v1, as, instead of a 1v1. And things could go in favor for UC Berkeley. And then on the bottom side, Blitzcrank, going to have a bit of a rougher time versus Morgana, but the, it, the potential, rather, is still there. And that is basically what UC Berkeley is. This is the Dreamers comp. Yeah, this is actually, I, I, I actually feel like this is really good for uh, Rafflecopter because uh, everybody is a pick almost. Uh, Kasahana, maybe not because he's a Nunu, and he, Nunus do get tanky, but uh, mm. you have the Varus, you have the Morgana, Azir, Gangplank. You can't, you can't Black Shield all of them. Somebody's going to get picked, and all of them are going to be priority targets that are going to be easily destroyed because there's not really much of a way of a big tank on the side of of UBC. So yeah, Berkeley, I really feel like they have a better comp here, and I, I'm really excited to see how that one's going to go. But first, do want to give a shout out to our social media plugs. Hello. You can type exclamation point discord in the chat, 
to pull up the Discord link and join our Discord community. You can also follow us on Twitter at twitter.com slash cstarleague. And if you just want Collegiate League of Legends material, content, tweets, things like that, go to twitter.com slash cslol for that. Facebook.com slash cstarleague for our Facebook page. I want to give a shout out to Twitch for a broad, I mean, pretty much being here the entire time for us, uh, partnering with us, being a great partner. Uh, we wouldn't be here or where we're at without Twitch. Thank you very much. You can also go follow them on Twitter at twitter.com slash Twitch, and their Facebook is facebook.com slash Twitch. And you know what? They probably also have a Twitch page. Probably go to twitch.tv. Just check that out, and they might have one or two. And then you can also go to YouTube if you want to check out any VODs or anything that you've missed. They are spoiler free. And uh, you can go to uh, youtube.com slash user slash C Star League or just type C Star League in the search bar for any of the games that you might have missed, any of the talk shows you might have missed that you want to catch up on, and go check them out. That'd be good for that. Also, um, you can type in uh, exclamation point casters in the chat to get our lovely faces on your Twitter as well. So go follow me. Go follow up returned. It'll be great. And don't think I don't see you person in the chat typing exclamation point Skype. You stop that right now. Yeah, nobody that, cares about that. That is so far gone. Yeah, the last time we used Skype, it was a bad ordeal. Now we use Discord, we're a lot more evolved. I hope Skype. I hope Microsoft doesn't ever like sponsor us. I guess they wouldn't now. I, I mean, just... if they want to, if they want to sponsor us, we might just follow them up on it. But in the end, we're back to League of Legends. We're back to the main event for this week: UC oh, Berkeley yeah. versus British Columbia, game number two. Yeah, this is going to be an interesting one. Again, want to reemphasize: both these teams are undefeated right now. That is a best of three series. UBC up one right now, looking to take it to a game number uh, uh, to finish this out in game number two and bring their record overall to a three and zero and put Berkeley into a two and one. Two and one. They're not out of the tournament yet, but they are really thinning their chances with that one defeat. So, you want to stay undefeated as long as possible, get into the postseason playoffs. We are on the rift gonna see where these teams go last time was a line of scrimmage the first two minutes of league of legends is always interesting or extremely boring <laughs> yeah it's very rarely in the middle there but uh you see berkeley they might be looking to make it that interesting option is i mean just look at that team composition they are looking to mess some people up in the early game most notably of all it's a blitz crank there on the bottom side but it does look like a pretty solid fan out from the way of ubc let's see if they get oh, caught off guard squee Squee looks to be fun. Yeah, I think he sees. Uh, there's the flash. Oh. There's the flash countered just in the nick of time, too. So both flashes of the support are down, but there is no first blood given over to anybody. Yeah, so far, nothing too crazy. The, probably the trade of flash does have to uh, favor the UC Berkeley squad just because the uh, no flash available on the Morgana is does make it a very easy target for your off copter to try a position around wave number one. But they may not be done it just yet. They're looking for the long con. There's a ward over that wall, though. Yeah, there is no more flash on Squee, so he gets caught. He is caught for sure, but he's walking over a ward. Or, I guess the team of California Berkeley are walking over a ward. So, knowledge gained, and it looks like Kazahana is going to react and start up his uh, opponent's blue buff and look for a three buff course, but it looks like they are predicting it on the side of Berkeley, and they too are going to take Kazahana's buff here. So, it may just go, uh, go even out in the end, anyways. Yeah, but the big thing is the knowledge advantage right now coming out for the side of UBC. Because Longan knows that, well, he's obviously starting on his side, but so does Kazahana. He knows absolutely everything in the map, whereas UC Berkeley, they are completely blind. Sure, they might be able to assume, oh, they have a Nunu, they probably saw us come in. He's probably going to be on our opposite buffs, but that's definitely going to influence a lot of this early game movement. And I'm curious to see if we can get a three buff coming out from one side or the other, but already with Longan on his own red side at the moment. Doesn't look like that's gonna be the case. No, 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 it's definitely not. You're going to... I'm actually, I actually really hope to see Longan and Kazahana meet each other, but Longan is actually taking a lot of damage right now. He has to use a smite pretty soon, I would assume, in order to get that health back up. But it's like Kazahana, he's going to just chill out on the side of, actually take the entire top side buffs of Longan away. So that is actually gonna be a huge advantage over to Kazahana and get his experience and his levels up as fast as possible here. Yeah, and just looking at the counter jungling strategy, that has actually gotten so much of a buff ever since that 8.0 patch. Because right when the preseason hit, they reduced the catch-up, I believe actually they got rid of it, the catch-up XP you get from jungle monsters. So now if you get put behind a level or two in the jungle, it is insanely hard to come back. Oh, this is fancy footwork with the pros, but is that thin was very pretty, that very nice uh, holding of his seer to get that stun onto pros. 
use the conflagration, waited for the stream of shuffle to come out, and once he landed, then threw out the seer. Very nicely played by Is That Them, and uh, actually gives me a lot of hope for this mid lane brand, which I was kind of skeptical of, but that kind of play will turn this game around. Most certainly, and IE on the top side, he is just completely showing Panda how this lane is played. He is taking yeah. control, has the CS advantage, and Orn, he's just stuck doing nothing under that tower. But here comes Kazahana. Uh, Kazahana with a dreaded Nunu gank. It's a flash out of Is That Them, so mission accomplished, flash, and a heal, actually. So, again, mission accomplished, one flash for two summoners, and now that is going to be Is That Them going back. We're not, he's actually going to stay, he's going to stay, seeing that... Uh, pros was fast shoving, predicted that he was going to go back. Long and Milk actually uh, doing some counter jungling of his own. Gets a flash of force out of him as well. With Pros is there, there's this ice ball to slow him down. One and more. He gets the explosive power. He flower he cannot. Kazahana picks up the first blood over Long and Milk. And this is extremely concerning for the side of UC Berkeley. They are so reliant on nearly every single one of their lanes getting advantage. And just like that, Jungler dies by the hands of Kazahana. Bros does get an assist in there, so it's gonna be helping out a little bit, but also so much of this early game pressure is on the back of Milk T to actually facilitate this early game. I wanted to say this a little bit earlier, but the adaptation I wanna see coming out of Cal Berkey, Berkeley is the vision game. If they can enable some of these picks just with this knowledge of knowing where Kazahana is, trying to catch out any rotations in the process, they can look to just completely break this game open but without the knowledge, that is insanely hard to execute on. Yeah, we did say that UBC, they have a, cr a huge amount of damage on their side, so if they can uh, get rolling and, if anything, keep from being put down, they can dish out a ton of this damage in the uh, coming into the mid game. That is going to be interesting to see. But we do see, uh, do see IE using this teleport on the top side, so he's not gonna have that global pressure as much with the teleport, but he still has cannon barrage. That is one of the benefits of running a gang plank. But man, he's getting just crapped. I don't want to say crapped upon, but he is getting quite a bit of damage put onto him. It, by it doesn't look pretty up there. It does not at all. Not for IE. But he's going to stay safe underneath this turret. Now we have a gank from Kazahana. Again, that dreaded Nunu gank. Here we go. But he has a red buff. This actually might force a flash out of Panda. And again, that is the big... Uh, um, hold on. Ooh, he's not going to go for it. Never mind. But uh, there is a rock grab oh. on the lies. And you are Varus. We have no escape. And there is a, a big, a big explosion. <laughs> Rockle Cutter actually picking up that kill with his... Uh, Lies, what attack. are you doing? Lies, needs to be careful. He even used his heal as well. He, he flashed. Did. Yeah, he did flash. Yeah, he did flash at that. But Manga Milk, once again, he is in trouble. He has no flash. He is going to go down. Pro is picking up that kill. Action all over the map right now. But so far, it is 2-1 in favor of University of British Columbia. Yeah, I really wish we had replays here uh, in the CSL, but unfortunately not quite there yet. But for those of you who are maybe a little bit confused why Lies no longer is a flash, he flashed in place on that player. Unfortunately, Lies, you are not uh, playing Zoe. Your flash does not deal damage, and he just didn't do anything on that play. Could have gotten out, could have tried to save himself, but just like that, the one winning lane currently for UC Berkeley is still winning. Turkey Master has been seen very often as the main carry for UC Berkeley alongside Is That Them. And already is getting off to an absolutely fantastic start. Sure, that kill did go over on the Rafflecopter, but that's still advantage you can play around on the bottom part of the map. Yeah, very much so. Not to mention deny more minions from Lies, who's already down quite a bit of minions. He does have a stopwatch available now, which I think that might have been what he was waiting for last time, but he did not proc it. So... Uh, disadvantage to him on that one, but he still has it nonetheless for any sort of uh, rocket grab in the future. But yeah, you have to avoid the uh, Rafa Copter's rocket grabs. He showed his prowess in the first game with those, and uh, nothing's changed. He's still Blitzcrank, still Rafa Copter on that Blitzcrank, and he can still land those impressive rocket grabs. Kazahana, he's on the bot side, might be getting caught up here. Squee is in the presence as well, but there's a lot of damage being put down onto Kazahana, and nobody here to answer it back. Well, he's making his way to the top. Turkey Master does pick up that kill. Long and Milk, is he going to be able to make it out? He does, but it looks like Rafflecopter, he is locked up. Even with the rock grab, still goes down. Squee picking up that kill. Pros getting an assist as well. Actually, everybody getting an assist because of the rock bar uh, cannon barrage from the top side. So, everybody on uh, UBC getting a little bit of something out of that. Yeah, exactly, and that is what you need to avoid if you are UC Berkeley. This early game where you just have priority nearly everywhere on the map just because you're champions is not going to last forever. And instead of looking to make those individual skirmish plays, 
they're making these full map plays without proper warning. They're getting caught out and responding to the plays coming out from University of British Columbia. And that is not how you manufacture your own victories. That's basically looking at the other guys and saying, hey, we're going to wait for you to make a mistake. And unfortunately, the guys you're looking at are the University of British Columbia. And they seem to be good at League of Legends. Yeah, they have, uh, they have a track record. We may have talked about it a little briefly, but they are showing that they still have what it takes to, uh, to beat championship caliber, at least get into playoffs and, uh, you know, just establish any sort of lead that they have. So doing well so far, two to three right now, no turrets taking us only eight and a half minutes, but the gold lead is a little bit of, uh, actually about a thousand right now. Squee catching out Rafflecopter with a black, uh, with a dark binding, I should say, but it's not going to really equate to anything besides just letting, letting him know that he is there. Rafflecopter getting some nice vision control in that bot side, which is very good for Long and Milk. Once he hits level 6, he's almost there, level 5 right now. Kazahana is level 6. I mean, that's about the same as level 5 uh, Nunu as it is anyways. And Absolute Zero doesn't add too much, but does uh, help out with these team fights. But gank-wise, not a huge, huge issue. For the most part. I mean, uh, Absolute Zero does help. And actually, we might see it happen right now, Returned. Kazahana, he's chasing down Turkey Master and Rafflecopter. Pros is... Getting up some backup, coming around this, the bend. Yeah, and once again, this is just another unforced error coming out of UC Berkeley. They get caught on the rotation. They're going to use the TP to try to force their advantage right now, but this is still extremely risky. IE has his, t has his teleport as well. This call of the Forge God. It's going to knock up Kazahama. Is it going to be enough to take out this dragon? It is. The dragon going to go over to, to UC Berkeley, and that is an Infernal Drake, and that's something they want desperately, but that is... Uh, is going to be an objective taken away. But meanwhile, IE, he is shoving the top lane turret. He may... Be... No, he's not going to be able to pick this one up. Never mind. He's definitely getting a lot of gold, but tower, yeah. not quite yet. Does have the coal in his back pocket. 66 yet to be completed. So he's still looking for the scaling game. Jump in from... Oh, they're going to turn it! Yeah, they are. The Chains of Corruption, that is going to proc the Blight and get a, get a kill for life. Turkey Master going down, and now that is a stopwatch being used from Rafflecopter, but a very nicely placed cannon barrage is going to force the... Uh, of course, the, the flash out of Rafflecopter there is the Glacial Prison missing, but a, another rocket grab onto Lies. Is it going to be enough, though? There's a big minion wave here, and it's not going to be enough. There's Dark Binding. Can they finish it up? There is one more auto attack. Lies picks up that kill. He wants a third one, but there's just a, too much risk chasing Long and Milk. They're just going to turn their attention to the bot lane turret. Ah, uh, the classic shred of, okay, the ADC flashes down, so we can no longer flash into the many enemy Blitzcrank, so without a doubt, we win that fight. Works out perfectly every single time for British Columbia, but a little bit less Mimi. They now have advantages on every single part of the map. There is very little room for actually come back. This might be it. Yeah, this is going to be pro right. going down. There is so much damage coming out from Is That Them. Brand oh. is an extraordinary amount of damage uh, for a damage dealer. But Wait a second. Master, lies, what are you doing? He actually had flash up that time too. I guess it wouldn't matter. Turkey Master would just flashed in, but that was a big overstay by Lies. Now there's a tight fight, fight in the top lane. And I was talking about there is the point where Absolute Zero does come in handy for a gank, cutting off escape routes. A nice flash from Panda. He is going to get in behind Long and Milk, and now is that them meeting them? Long and Milk picking up Ka Kazahana, and now IE going down as well. Berkeley, they're winning these team fights in these little skirmishes, and they're going to go in onto the Rift Herald now. All right, so you see Berkeley, right when we thought we could start counting them out, they make themselves very much well known. And this is the advantage I wanted to see them play around ever since level one, but apparently just need to wait for the ultimates to come back around. And right now, you see Berkeley, they're playing with a bit of swagger in their step. There they are. They, they pick up the turret. They did pick up the turret. They pick up the first turret of the game in the bot side, and now Pro's looking to get something done in the mid lane, but he's stopped by the Seer. And that is so, so detrimental. So degrading, I guess you could say. Pros making the shuffle happen, making the the uh, flashy footwork happen, but getting shut down immediately with one Q after a conflagration as the uh, advantage of Brand. And again, props is at them for being able to keep up with the pace of the ever-shifting sands of Azir. I mean, Brand is one of those champions that very much rely on the skill of the user to really start being that huge threat. Because when you pick that champion, it either works really well or really, really not well. <laughs> or just goes completely into the dirt. At this time, it looks like he's actually pulling off a pretty good performance on it. But now here comes the next question for UC Berkeley. They've established that early game. How do they keep pushing that advantage? Because this is the point in last game around that 20 minute mark outside of the Baron where they started getting that lead, but they threw it right on back. And if they can prevent that throw, they might be looking to push this to a game number three, but there is a long road ahead. 
Rift Herald is popped up on the map right now. Last game, it didn't quite have the effect that I think they wanted it to. It didn't take a turret last game. It doesn't look like it's going to take a turret this game. So that's actually just improper use of the Rift Herald twice by UC Berkeley. I believe it, I believe it was UC Berkeley last time. Now I'm kind of questioning myself. Either way, it was, yes, it was. improper use. Yeah, thank you. Improper use of that Rift Herald twice in a row now. Not getting anything out of it. And that should be almost a guaranteed uh, tower down. Something you need if you want to keep catapulting yourself into this mid game. But Ooh. not going to happen. There's a nice dark finding. Long range dark finding on it is that then. But no power backing it up from pros or anybody else in the vicinity. So now there's going to UBC going to focus on defending this mid lane turret. While Berkeley focus on taking it out. There's a hook onto Kazahana. Can they capitalize on this one? Canabrage coming out. Oh, damage. Forge God also pros. He has a lot of damage, but so does Is That Them, able to take out Pros, and now Squee going down as well. That is a two for one in favor of Berkeley, and now they may finally get this mid lane turret. This looks like a completely different squad coming out for UC Berkeley. They have definitely learned from a lot of the mistakes they made last game. They now have the advantage, and they're playing with it. But the question still stands, is this going to be enough to counter out the massive late game threat? You still get from Varus Azir plus a gank like pushing on that side wave, as still, there is no answer yet for IE on this side wave. I don't know if anyone just... Yeah, no, you're definitely right, and that could be a huge um, the, a factor in this game if IE just stays split-pushing how UC Berkeley decides to deal with that one. That is uh, something he is... I mean, every every gangplank can do, especially once you get to that uh, Triforce, shove down turrets extremely quickly. Let's see what IE decides to do here, because so far team fights have not been in their favor. But we have yet to see an all-out 5v5 team fight. I'm anxious to see how Ooh. it's going to work out. Pros didn't get oh, that blue buff. It ended up going over to Kazahana. That's uh, got to be a feels bad man moment. Report Kazahana troll jungle. Yeah, I mean, that was actually a really huge factor for pros to be able to just spam out these uh, sand soldiers. And not to mention the, um, uh, I'm sorry, the shifting sands as well. Very huge dis, uh, disadvantage to pros at not being able to get that blue buff. Now, Kazahana, of course, he does have it. Now, that's going to be good for his Blood Boil. Blood Boil is already on a low cooldown, so this might turn out all right. But so far, I'm still unimpressed returned with the Kazahana and pros synergy. The In general, the Nunu and whoever AP champion you want to throw it on synergy. I mean, it's definitely a late game investment, and neither game so far has really hit that point in time where you can just say, all right, let's straight up team fight. And also a lot of these fights haven't been your traditional front to back. Last game, the Nunu was directly opposite of the Twitch composition that just wanted to burst out the enemy team before a fight even started. In this one, you have a similar kind of effect with the brand, definitely looking a lot more traditional in the front to back comp, but just still not really looking at straight DPS numbers and more looking at the positioning at the skill shots themselves. So curious to see if it actually does come to fruition here. But yeah, well, like what you said, I personally haven't really seen a new pop off too hard either. So may, now, there's got to be a first time for everything, but just haven't seen it yet. There definitely is. And I'm anxious to see that. Now, one thing that I usually do see is a new new take advantage of being a new new and secure objectives, but the dragons have not been in their favor. And that is very surprising that second drake the infernal did go over to uh uc berkeley that is something that they i would think they would definitely want but not going to happen squee needs to be careful here throws on the black shield just to clear this ward fearful of a rocket grab the god hand rothful copter has shown his prowess with it not gonna hit it this time i just talked uh, i just upped him i just uh, gave him some some uppets here but hold on we have possibly an engage there is the stopwatch coming out from is that then flashes out immediately He's going to get the kills. Anybody going to get a kill? Pros, he needs to be careful. He has low health with that with that uh, brand passive on him. And now Rafflecopter being able to pick up Squee. And now Lies going down as, as, was, as Turkey Master jumping in onto him. Kazahana, he has to back off of his turret as well. Pros, he has no summoners, no mana. Thank you, Blue Buff. Cannot defend this turret. So that is going to be the inner mid lane turret down. And now you see Berkeley going to go in onto the inhibitor turret. Possibly pick themselves up an inhibitor here. And the Nunu pick still... Once again, emphasizing it's a trap, not picking it up, not, not, not paying off here. Yeah, and that's going to be the mid lane inhibitor going over at 17 and a half minutes for the side of UC Berkeley. If you put out a time chart of exactly when UC Berkeley wants stuff to happen, this is right on time. All trains will not be late yet today for the UC Berkeley squad, and they may be looking for one more pick as it may be. But also, you got to start looking really crit critically at the UC, at the not UC Berkeley, but UBC University of British Columbia draft, as they really don't have too many 
ways to engage these sorts of fight. Last match, they did really well on emphasizing on every single little misposition, every single misplay coming out of UC Berkeley because they had the engage. They could force fights on those small misplays, but this time, the only real form of engage you have is lies on this Varus pick. Yeah, and you do and the, your... and the Morgana, my bad. Yeah, the Morgana is a, is a nice pick, but it's not really much of an engage unless you just all out put yourself in there. But that's kind of how lies is too. He has to throw out the chains of corruption, and you don't want to have your ADC be the engage. That is so that is so risky, especially when you have power players like is that them on Brand and and uh, Longvin Milk Milksy on the Sejuani. There's so many factors that shut down any sort of pseudo engage that UBC could have. It's just a very difficult position for them. Baron is going to be out in a minute and 10 seconds, but this mid lane is blown open in favor of Brickley. You have to wonder if UBC can even contest the Baron at this point. Yeah, most certainly. And every single one of these fights have been going so well in favor for the squad of UC Berkeley. And this is ba I have no reason to expect why Baron should not continue just the same. But let's start looking across the map once again. Let's actually look a little bit more closely at the carries themselves. When you look at these ADCs, Sure, you do have not finally have a Rage Blade completed for Lies, but that's only the one item spike. He really wants to hit that two, maybe even the three item spike. And you're looking at nearly a 2.3k gold lead in favor for Turkey Masters on the Chisona. Mid lane, 6.3 to 6.9, definitely a lot less pronounced, but still advantage in favor for Is That Thumb and in favor for UC Berkeley. Every single position across the map, except for that top lane, really is favoring their squad and when you're playing this scaling squad, you need to have some sort of advantage to carry you through, and they just don't have it yet. They need IE to become this late game powerhouse. Yeah, and there might not be a late game for that to happen because the game is is uh, winding down. Almost, it's approaching 20 minute mark right now. But look, Berkeley, they're ready for the Baron. There's no vision from uh, UBC on this Baron. They're gonna go establish it right now. Squee needs to be careful, be fearful of the rocket grab. Respect it. But there is so much damage coming out from UDC. There's uh, uh, UC Berkeley, I'm sorry. Kazahana, he's getting in there. Can he do this? I don't think he can. He has a flash right out. There's a teleport from Panda. It's canceled, not needed anymore. But Kazahana, that was his chance to, I mean, he uses flash. Now he doesn't have it if he needs to steal the Baron. Exactly, and with no, uh, with no explosive charge uh, on the other side of the wall, no explosive plan to actually get him over the wall there, it's going to be impossible for Kazahana to really be a threat on this Baron buff, and that's what you are as a Nunu. University of uh, bleh, 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 UC Berkeley, uh, Cal Berkeley, right now are doing a great job positioning around this Baron. They know that that mid lane is so pressured from the side of UBC, and they're just trying to stretch the enemy apart right now. And if this takes too much longer, there might not be too much of a base left to defend for British Columbia. Yeah, this is a... Uh... This is looking very scary for UBC. The super minions are in the base. They need to be careful. They also cannot give up the Baron. This is a sticky situation. But to be fair, they have two Nexus in tur uh, turrets to really spare here. And uh, you know, they can just sacrifice one, can't they? But it doesn't matter. IE decided to back after he took the bot lane turret and picked off those minions crushing into the base. So this is uh, still a very, very scary situation. The gold gap is only about... Only about 1.3k, but it seems so much more in the favor of UC Berkeley than the numbers actually show. Exactly, and keep, don't forget to add on top those two, the value you get with those two dragons. That's going to be a pretty big ultimate down. Uh, yeah, that's a that's a glacial. That's actually a second glacial prison. I think he's whipped it in a row, so he needs to be careful when throwing those out. Kazahana is relatively tanky, so can withstand a lot of damage being thrown out by UC Berkeley. But it is it may that is going to be Berkeley going down to the uh, the uh, uh, Inferno Drake. Sorry about that. Inferno Drake. Kazahana, he's not even going to try to contest it. This is going to be the second Inferno Drake on the Berkeley and just shove their power even more into their favor. Oh, but Rafflecopter, he might be caught out here. He is locked down with the Dark Binding. IC is there, but there's also Chains of Corruption used. Oh, no! But look, they, with Chains of Corruption gone, that means anybody else can just engage in onto them lies going down. I, is that them picking that one up with a vicious explosion of his passive nice combo from is that them uses flash to set it up but did get flies off of the map the classic 2016 world championship ruler right there jumps on forward makes the play with the ultimate but gets picked off himself in the process and that is in the most literal sense of the definition a very worth play coming out for university of british columbia as they're a still able to keep this one rolling on but losing lies 
does mean they're not really going to be able to follow up anything with themselves. But the name of the game right now for British Columbia is just stall, i.e., Ironically enough, hasn't picked up an IE yet. He hasn't really picked up any sort of critical strike because he's had to invest in that Maw of Malmordius against the just sheer potential that is is that Thumbs brand right now. But once he's still going to keep scaling up, he's going to become that threat. And you still can never really count out lies and pros once they get more items. So Thumb finding a way to actually stall out this Baron was great for them. And now they're in a much better spot with that mid lane, mid lane inhibitor available. Maybe be looking for one more pick to keep this game going. Yeah, this is all they can hope for is to just stall, like you said, and it is, it is so such a huge, um, I guess on a on a nice edge for them because they could make one false move and completely lose this game. Rafflecopter, all he needs is one grab, and that could completely turn the uh, turn the favor for UC Berkeley. And I say favor more like, um, uh, I guess encouragement to pull a trigger onto something like a Baron. There's been so much dancing around this Baron that. Uh, Hey, I'm surprised it's still up right now, but it's only been up for four minutes. It seems like an eternity at this point in the game, but as it may, both teams cautious. Berkeley, they may be wondering what to do now because uh, they seem to not be pulling any sort of trigger, not be not making any moves. And you have to wonder if that's because they plan on it or because possibly they just they just are unsure of how to approach the situation in the game. Yeah, and that's something you can get with some of these more inexperienced teams. They play really well, especially when you have a good coaching staff around them and a pretty solid roster. They play very well when you have a set game plan, like like they're doing right now, which is getting this pick game rolling, then continuing throughout this mid game, but you start to falter when some of these things don't quite go as planned. They wanted to basically get that 20 to 22 minute Baron in their pockets to just end the game right out. But now, UBC, they're finding those creative ways to just stall out this game even further. And that might be what's giving them this little advantage, but Berkeley, they're ready to pull the trigger. There it is. It's finally happening, and it can go down so quickly. They have one Mountain Drake. They also have Brand. Brand it can do percent health damage, a huge amount to Baron. Kazahana is in the, in the wings there. Cannon Barrage is going to force them off of, it, off of it, I should say. IE uses Teleport to get into the position for his team fight here. But again, that's all they did is just knock them off of it. And now what else are they going to do? They might pick up the mid lane turret here. UBC will take anything they can get at the moment. Yeah, they're doing a fantastic job right now of just keeping UC Berkeley moving around the map, preventing them from actually starting any of these fights. But here could be the engage. And I call the Forge God. It's going to land on the lies. He flashes out and there's no Glacial Prison going to lock oh. him down. And there is... Turkey Master, he's going to use the stopwatch to try to get out of here. He actually flashes out immediately, but the, br the brand ultimate, it is going to pop onto Kazahana. He is going to go down, and now Lies, he is needs to get out as fast as possible. But he is also going to pop the stopwatch, but I think it's only going to delay the inevitable. Turkey Master, more than likely going to pick him up. No, he actually flashes out, but look at pros. He gets a shutdown. This is a very chaotic fight all over the place, but Squee is the only one left for UBC. Rafflecopter and Long and Milk. And Panda, actually. Panda's still alive, too. Panda also available only two kills on the side or two deaths i should say on the side of uc berkeley four on the side of british columbia a very solid fight one i won't actually i won't even say solid a fight one regardless for berkeley that was definitely a bittersweet play there for british columbia because on the sweet side you at least stop the baron you're only gonna lose this mid lane inhibitor but on the bitter side they definitely still not quite able to actually turn these fights that they want to i'd be looking for a pick right here and it's only Kazahana and Squee here. Oh, yeah. They might just be teleporting out. Oh, no, the root's going to stop that. Uh, cannot teleport with the root. Unlucky. Yeah, that is a very nice play by Squee. It was a <laughs> nice nice awareness on that, I suppose. But, yes, that is going to be Rafflecopter off the map. And with everybody going back, UBC, they may want to capitalize on this Baron. If anything, clear out wards and get vision of their own. That was a back coming out of Milk T. They have so much damage. They could just do this right now before Milk T could even come back. This could be the throw. Oh my god, they're actually going to do a pros on the other side. He is safe. Can they do it? There is a flash. There is a root on too. Is that them? Who's going to be able to kill? Do That's the Baron. Kazahana, he got the Baron for UBC. And that is a kill on to Is That Them. UBC, they have command of this skirmish right now. Turkey Master, he's on the wrong side of town. Where is he going to go from here though? Uh, probably who's dead. Gonna, who's gonna get it though? Who is going to get? They're gonna give it over to Lies. That's probably a wise decision. He needs the kills. So it is two for zero and a Baron over to UBC. And once again, this game, like, I don't know where it's at, but it's a pendulum for sure. UBC, they scratch and they claw and they find the way right back into this one. 
That was a great way to take the Baron. And I mean, you can hit on the Nunu all you want, and I'll be honest with you, I'm not sure it really deserves as much praise as it's been getting uh, in the competitive scene as of late, but when you have the Nunu with the Nazir, with the Varus, and just the Nunu itself, you're going to take that Baron really quickly in that lapse of judgment, that quick recall coming out from the side of UC Berkeley, even when they had the very clear advantage in mid lane and could have taken all the time in the world to actually reset their laps of playmaking, their laps of control leads to that small punch that brings UBC right back into this one. And now with the Baron buff, they are in the perfect position to keep this game going as long as they want. Finally, Ghostblade completed onto IE. Looks like he's going to be building up that crit item next. And those barrels are gonna hurt. Also, yeah. Lies now picking up what looks to be... Oh, I thought it was gonna be parts of the uh, Blade of the Ruined King. Not quite just yet, but there needs to be some answer to these giant tanks in both Pandex and Milk T pretty soon. Yeah, that's been the big bane of them is they, that there's a big front line for uh, Berkeley. There's not much of a front line for UBC, British Columbia, but... With that said, yeah, IE, huge amount of damage going to be coming out from him now. Rafflecopter is going to try to pick out somebody here, but not going to happen. He's gonna actually going to lay, uh, lay, uh, lay back on that one. Get the uh, Sharima turret in the mid lane and just push this mid lane and uh, empower these minions into the inner mid lane turret. Try to equalize some of this pressure that's happened with this missing inhibitor. And it's amazing how much UBC has been able to do without an inhibitor for a good portion of this game now. They actually lost their mid lane inhibitor the first time, sub 20 minutes. So they've almost spent half of this game without a mid lane inhibitor. And there comes the counter engage. Yes, here comes this uh, Forge God. He's going to knock a Kazahana. He's going to be pulled back. He is going to go down extremely quickly, but Lies still picks up a kill on the Robocopter. Kazahana survived. No, he doesn't. He finally gets out. Or he finally uh, <laughs> gets dead, I should say. I.E. almost gets got destroyed there. He did, he did get got, but so did the mid lane turret. So mission accomplished for UBC. That's what their goal is, and that's what they got. Exactly, and they could just sit on the mid lane as long as they want to. Good thing that they're back right now because you still need to go deal with those sideways, especially that top wave, and that's going to be a lot of money into Pro's pocket the second he can get on back and grab that money right there. But yeah, Runat's Hurricane now completed onto Lies. Now he's working for the Blade of the Rune King. Once that comes online, I think Lies is going to be able to just straight carry these fights as long as he's safe from Is That Them because... I'm going to be honest, that was a really well-executed fight for University of British Columbia, but it almost went so long. Lies, most likely unknowingly, was standing in one of those brand passive circles. And if you can just knock that two or three times onto Lies, who only has the wits end for defense, and what looks to be a void staff coming out soon here for Is That Them, one little misfission like that, it all of a sudden Lies could just drop seemingly out of nowhere. Yeah, it has certainly been uh, Is That Them's uh, priority or, or pressure weight on the shoulders of him to carry these team fights. Turkey Master, not, being, not doing too bad, but the big amount of damage, uh, especially upfront burst damage coming out from Is That Them, especially with the circle passives, and that is a lot of pressure being applied in these team fights onto Is That Them, and we're going to see if he can keep up with that, because that is pivotal. If he tilts even just a little bit, could go in the way of UBC. Yeah, mostly with no more neutral objectives on the board, and UBC still with pretty good priority in this mid lane, they are still the ones very much in control of this pace. And just look at that gold lead. A lot of it, I have to admit, probably is coming from IE. He's got the Klepto. I don't even know if he has the Klepto, but definitely he at least has his own passive. That gets him at least 4k gold lead advantage on that fight, but Rafflecopter just blew his ultimate there for seemingly nothing. I think that was just to get rid of the, uh, the, the Banshee's Veil off of Pros. He's going to get rid of the Banshee's Veil and then immediately rocket grab him, but... He Sharima shuffled out of there fast enough to avoid that. Now he's just going to wait back for his uh, his um, Banshee's Veil to come back online. Ooh, but now we're at that magical time of the night where IE, he not quite, once again, not finishing the IE, so I'm kind of disappointed, but has completed the Fam Dancer, is ready on the split push as well, but he might also be getting quite a bit more assistance. And there is now no answer for this two level up gangplank. And don't even forget that. Think about the rest of his team too, because they might just be coming down as well. Yeah, they do. They need turrets immediately. They need turrets to equalize the pressure on this map. And IE has been pushing, uh, split pushing for most of this game, actually. Here comes Call of the Forge God. Let's see if it does hit anybody. As normal, it does hit Kazahani. He has Flash this time, keeps them out. And there's a very nice uh, block of the uh, Glacial Prison. But is that them? That just his uh, Inferno Blaze. Uh, oh no! Everywhere. 
Pyroclasm is actually called. Turkey Master taking out Oh Ivy. no! A big damage dealer lies. Is he gonna go down? It is. He is gonna go down with the pop of the explosive charge. This is Turkey Master now. It is his team fight. Now that the uh, Could they be looking to end? I think they they might be able to. The, the, I mean, there are some really huge uh, death timers on the side of UBC right now. Kazahana, he has 20 seconds, but he is not a big wave clear. I actually don't think they can end yet. It's gonna be close. I mean, Kazahana is up in 14 seconds, but the next real carry is 25 seconds away from pros and lies. And this is also where you're getting a lot of the weaknesses of the UBC comp. Not only do they have very low engage, they don't really have any tanks to soak that front line. And when you knock out Kazahana so early on to, into a fight, it's nearly impossible for lies or pros to, or IE for that matter, to get into a comfortable position. And just like that, Baron is going to be up in just a few more seconds. And mid lane inhibitor once more falls in favor for UC Berkeley. If they get this Baron, that might be all she wrote. And we might be going on to a game number three. And honestly, with how that last pair went over, I think UC Berkeley, they're going to be a little bit more careful about their backs. Yeah, this this is a... You cannot disrespect is that them. If he has Pyroclasm up right now, he, he or any time during a fight, he's going to absolutely destroy your entire team. But, yeah, the Baron is almost up. 13 seconds to return. This is going to be a pivotal team fight coming up. And it, it, the weird thing is, by the way, UBC, they're actually up in gold. It doesn't actually seem like it. Again, this entire game hasn't seemed like they're up in gold, but they actually are. It doesn't matter, though. Oh, they started, but they're going to be wow. found out nearly immediately. Oh, I don't know if this is a good idea. Kazahana, he's... Lies on the side. He's going to tank out quite a bit here. Kazahana, he goes down. He gets exploded. Pyroclasm is not up now, but on the backside, Lies is being zoned out, but actually he is able to pick up... Uh, no, 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 I'm sorry. It's oh, we got him! I mean, there's the rocket grab onto IE, and that is going to be all she wrote. I know he does get a kill beforehand, but he's still going to go down, and that is Froze and Squee, the only ones left right now. Can Squee make a difference here? Can Froze make a difference here? Yeah, he's going well. Now it's just Froze left, as it is two for four, and I believe Berkeley, they are finally going to shut out this game. It's going to get closed. Lies is only 21 seconds alive. Froze is still alive. He's going to be back in right now. But still, UBC cannot find their ideal fight right now because they're trying to go at it with five with still the split pushing advantage. They're not actually in utilizing what they have built their composition around. Here comes Kazahana. Here comes Lies. A sweeped team fight right now could be the game the other way. And Bear Buff is still available. This oh looks very familiar. They still are not able to finish out the game, though. And that's still a little bit of breath of life for UBC. Next dragon is up. That is the third Infernal Drake for Berkeley, and that is going to be uh, pretty much the nail in the coffin, I believe. Oh no. Yeah. The dragon triple Infernal going over in favor of UC Berkeley, and just keep in mind, that means triple Infernal not only available on Turkey Masters Tristana, but also on Is That Thumbs Brandon. He's going to be burning people up left and right, and Kazahana just has not been able to be the front line his team has so desperately needed. And also with that fight, I have zero idea how Lies was on the wrong side of that fight. You had the entirety of the UBC team kind of fighting in that area down below the red buff, but Lies was over to the left of Baron Pit. He was like all on his own on a solo mission and got caught out immediately. Yeah, that one, uh, that one threw me off a little bit too, but he actually did end up taking out Is That Them, but not before Lies was also able to be taken out by Is That Them. So, kills for kills, but regardless, Is That Them, all he needs to do is throw out his ultimate, his Pyroclasm. He does an incredible amount of damage. We've been seeing it time and time and time again. There is no catch on the side of UBC that you, you uh, that uh, Berkeley is allowing, because if they can catch out Is That Them, then they may be able to actually do some damage here. But look, they're coming up Baron again prematurely, and it's just going to be stopped. And now it actually might be engaged on by Berkeley. And it's going to take some very creative shot calling for UBC to shock all their way out of this one. I mean, they may be in a bit of rebuilding here, but they've still got quite a name to uphold. And it does look like it's still just going to be a dance around this mid lane. As usually most people see the mid lane as kind of the gateway to Baron. Whenever you want to grab that, you got to go through mid. Ult's going to come out once again. And I need a counter of how many times this Baron has been stopped by IE's ult. And also, I see a I see a BF sword. We finally might be seeing the I E I E. Well, maybe I'm just kind of too late. I E I E O. I would assume that's what he would be going for as well. But a guardian angel is also, I guess, a decent option here. I don't even know. Cause yeah, like, probably is a bit more sane. <laughs> I I still want to keep the dream alive. 
Yeah, of course. And honestly, the barrels with an IE is going to absolutely destroy any backline. You see Berkeley's a hit. little bit split up here, but yeah, UBC, they're not... They, once again, just want this game to go on even longer, because the more time there is, the more potential they have for one of these godlike teamfights to actually go in their favor, because that is honestly the win condition. They need some amazing barrel to catch the backline. Because I'm going to be honest, I don't think I've seen IE contribute too much to these fights. Here comes the Baron, though. They're instantly gone! Yeah, it goes down so quickly. Here's the fight. Yeah, there's the fight. Kazahana once again the front line, but again, it's not going to be enough. He does stay in blood quite a while, though. Oh, Why the faulty! Oh! That's not enough. There is Brand. There is Tristana just cleaning up, and that is a four for one right now. And they're making it a five, a clean, uh, not a clean ace, but an ace overall. Quadra over. kill. Um, Berkeley, a quadra kill for Turkey Master, and that is finally to return. It's going to be game, going on to game number three. Brand does damage no that is the headline of this game between is that thumb and turkey master they just completely wipe house and for ubc there's just never a solid place to actually start up and fight because it feels like lies and pros they're never actually able to set up a fight their way that is finally going to be the nexus turret going down that is three infernal drakes on the side of brand empowering his flames even more because that is just how science works i know it and, uh, my god, UBC, I, um, again, don't pick the Nunu, it's a trap, and I, I have seen it over and over again, Nunu does not do a very good job of frontlining or jungling, so, game number three, I really hope to see Oof. a Nunu not on the game, not on the rift. Yeah, it just didn't work out with their composition, they weren't, they, when you pick the Nunu, you want to play the team fight, but they had a split pusher, they didn't have a frontline, and everything just went falling down in the end, unlucky. Yeah, but we're going to see who is lucky in game number three because this is a series. This is the, the, a back-to-back -back, uh, best of three going to game number three today for CSL. So my name is Joshua Feck Quest. I'm here with Returned. Stay tuned. We are going to get into game uh, a lobby for game number three. University of British Columbia versus University of California, Berkeley. Everything's on the line here. Stick around. Be back in just a moment. Yeah. 